Player rankings absolutely drive me crazy, and I'm about to drive you crazy because that's exactly what I'm talking about today. I'll do it in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. everybody thanks again and welcome to locked on jaguars i am your locked on jaguars host tony wiggins your daily jacksonville jaguars podcast where it's your team every day and we thank you for making us your first listen a quick reminder that we are free to subscribe to on our youtube page called locked on jaguars and make sure you hit that like button and that bell to get notifications whenever we uh, drop an episode also wherever you get your audio podcast make sure that you tap in every single day to make sure you don't miss an episode hello and shout out to my everydayers the locked on jaguars everydayers what is going on i know who you all are i mention you as much as i can but i'll mention you more whenever i get an opportunity and if you're a new listener to locked on jaguars you can be an everyday or two if you join us every single day and make sure you tap in as well i'm gonna tap into something that absolutely gets on my nerves see there are some things man that Sometimes you just got to do shows that, you know, about things and about subjects that kind of irritate you a little bit. And that's, I think, that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Things that irritate me and bother me to death about this business. And that is player rankings because um, it can be one of those subjective things. And uh, it, it can also be something that becomes a bit irritating because most of the time, what people do is they talk about who they like and who their favorites are. And I think that there's a distinct difference between who your favorite is and who you know is the better player. I'm going to give you an example of what I mean, and I'm going to tie the Jaguars into this today uh, in segment one. Segment two, I'm going to tell you why it matters, because you need those alpha dogs to make those key plays in certain critical situations, and then why it doesn't matter, because – this ain't basketball where you got five guys on the court at once. It's football where you have 53 guys and most of them at some point have to make some sort of contribution in order for a team to win. So outside of the quarterback position, there, there's no one player that's going to really make that much of a difference in the uh, in the NFL if the rest of the team stinks. All right. So we'll talk about that and then we'll specifically get into the Jaguars and talk about where they rank this is important to me because of this there are a lot of um shall i say people that won't rank jaguar players very high and that's because the team hasn't had a reputation for winning lately um and the reason why i know that for a fact is because there are jaguar players in my opinion that should have been considered for the hall of fame a long time ago and be and get more consideration than they have been given. Fred Taylor is one of them. Uh, they're gonna, folks will look at some stats and don't look at others. How can you look at the fact that he only has 65 touchdowns without understanding why he only had 65 touchdowns? The other thing is how can you, um, how can you look at Jimmy Smith's career and not give him the consideration statistically well, that you give everybody else when Jimmy Smith had 10, 10 1,000 yard seasons. Um, and why did it take so Tony Baselli so long to get into the Hall of Fame when there were other players that had short careers uh, that actually did get into the Hall of Fame? When everybody and their brother said that Tony Baselli during his playing days was the best left tackle in football, you can make an argument for Jonathan Ogden. I think Willie Rofe and Orlando Pace were a little bit behind him, right? And Tony told me, uh, it was off the air, kind of off the, it wasn't really off the record, but it was off the air. We were doing a radio show together years ago. And Tony Baselli told me Walter Jones was better than him. And this is Walter Jones was still playing. So uh, that's the only person that I can think of over the last 25 years that probably has a, a legitimate argument to say that they were better than Tony. But here's what happened. When you don't win enough, that's what happens. This is why I say having a real good team with a lot of success carries way more weight than being a, a single individual when you don't win. It's very much easy for people to, to have you in the consciousness 
of uh their conscious if that makes sense they have you in the guy of course they got you in the consciousness of their conscious but that's the point that i want to make why do they matter so much they 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 matter when it comes to winning right here's what you want as a good team and this and this even goes for the jaguars you want to be you want to have a team that doesn't have holes in it right you want everybody to you you want everybody who can play i take a team full of very good players and then depth guys who can really really play and understand what we're trying to do over having four or five guys that are like the best in the league at their position but then we don't have any depth i'll give you an example of that the rams from last year now they won a super bowl the year before but the second they lost their quarterback the second they started to lose people they didn't have the depth they still had arguably the best corner in the game and they had a guy that everybody considers the best defensive lineman in modern day history and that's aaron donald and they had some other players that were pretty good but they still couldn't get over they still had cooper cup at that point who was considered one of the three best receivers in the league but for some reason that team started going downhill because you need more depth this is not basketball and even that's being proven wrong a little bit in the nba where you got two or three guys but if you ain't got more than that look at phoenix look at brooklyn before that you know you can have two of two of the three 10 best players in the league and still not do well because you actually need a team but i saw something today that Oh, it made me shake a little bit. One, historically, I hate when people, I'm not going to say hate, that's a strong word, but I dislike when folks are all about right nowism when it comes to uh, naming players. DK Metcalf, God bless him. It's his, it's his, he plays in the NFL. He's played more football than I ever imagined that I would. Uh, he, he told Brian McFadden on the podcast that this was his list. So this is what I mean by the difference between favorite and best. He named his five best receivers. I didn't even get to number five. He got to number three, and he still had not mentioned Jerry Rice. Now, granted, he mentioned some great players. He mentioned Antonio Brown with his crazy self and uh, Randy Moss and Terrell Owens. Ironically, all three of those guys are in my top six. So it's not like I'm sitting here saying that DK doesn't know what he's talking about, but any list of wide receivers, in fact, I'll go on a limb to say any list of football players pure football players and you get to number three and you haven't mentioned jerry rice i don't know man something might be wrong with you right jerry rice had two hall of fame careers in one career if you take jerry rice after his 31st birthday and jerry rice from the time that he came into the league up until his 31st birthday both of those jerry rices go to the nfl hall of fame Here's where people will go against that. He had those that team around him. He had John Taylor on the other side, and he was either catching balls from Montana or he was catching balls from Steve Young, and they're both in the Hall of Fame, and he had a great offensive line. He had great... They say it about Emmitt Smith. Well, he ran behind that line. Tell me which line you're talking about because the, he ran like behind four different lines in Dallas. It wasn't all the same guys. Now, go name all the Hall of Famers on that line. You'll name one, and that's Larry Allen. And Larry Allen came in 1993. Dallas had already won two Super Bowls. I, I, I just want people – history is very important. We're going to get on a soapbox about politics, but let me tell you why I think history is super, super important. Because I grew up learning about guys like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Lou Alcindor. I saw him in, you know, in my lifetime uh, – after I'd already read about it. I didn't see him at UCLA. I grew up learning about Lee Trevino and Jack Nicholas, guys that I didn't watch. I read little books about them in the library. And it was by honest journalists that shaped what I feel about. I learned about Babe Ruth. I learned about Jesse Owens. I, it is very important that when we do these things, that what we do is we tell people the truth and, and be able to put some context to some of these lists. Because what happens is, Folks will, over time, forget about people that they probably should not forget about. I'm going to get into why they matter and why they don't. Talk more about these rankings. And then in the final segment, we're going to tie this into Jacksonville Jaguars. Because we've already mentioned the Jags a little bit when we talk about history. Like those guys, Baselli, Jimmy Smith, and Fred Taylor would be Hall of Fames, I believe, in the, if they play in a bigger market. I'll do more of all of this here in just a second on Locked on Jaguars. But first, 
I got something to tell you, and that is that our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire every week, we're going to give you, uh, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. So, with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy picks of the week when making the first overall pick in fantasy football drafts in 2023 49ers running back christian mccaffrey is a guaranteed fit a healthy mccaffrey is going to uh guarantee that he's going to see well more than 300 touches again in his first full season with the 49ers and is the centerpiece of the 49ers offensive engine mccaffrey checks all the boxes including his talent and usage, high floor and ceiling. Run with CMC as the guaranteed fit at number one for a smooth ride to another big year of numbers. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay guaranteed fit and over 122 million parts and accessories, for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays smoothly, running smoothly the whole time. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shocks, struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it, and they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Motors guaranteed fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go for it, switch cars, switch gears, and crank the AC and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up and it is hot in Florida because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check, get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Motors, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers eligible bull items only exclusions apply it's guaranteed fit all right running it down here on locked on jaguars as we establish the importance or the lack of importance of of lists lists don't matter players matter lists don't score touchdowns but lists are a reflection of how people feel now I'm not angry that DK, I don't know if he got to four or five and heard Jerry Rice. I think I tuned it out when he got to number three of the wide receivers. There's a difference between your favorites. There's a difference between your favorites and guys that you grew up watching. And if you're only going to name people that you grew up watching, I get it. I understand. And, and like I said, it's all subjective. What is subjective is that there have been football players who are Hall of Famers that consider Jerry Rice, Jesus, and Cleves. Deion Sanders, Michael Irvin. Guys like that that really don't give credit to uh, guys that are – Deion's the same dude that said the Hall of Fame has turned into the Hall of Very Good. Remember that? But he will tell you that Jerry was the guy. Folks like Shaq and Barkley that tell you every time you watch them on TNT that these young guys can't play. Something's wrong. Something's off. Every single time they tell you that Michael Jordan is the best that they've ever seen. But somehow we have a tendency to not give that a whole bunch of weight, right? So I try to give weight to when players say who's the best and who's not. And there are a lot of media people that still don't believe that Trevor Lawrence is, is a top 10 quarterback. Some of them have him at number eight, number nine. I don't know what list they're watching, but in no world, in no world, you can have your little list. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to be as profound as I can. Hey, no world in no world is Dak Prescott right now a better quarterback than Trevor Lawrence. And I'm not being biased. I'm just telling you, he's accomplished a lot more because he's played longer. That's like telling me I ate more chicken wings than somebody who just sat down when I've been there all day at the buffet. Yeah, you damn right I ate more chicken wings than they did. But guess what? Doesn't mean I'm a better chicken wing weeder. It just means that I got an earlier start, right? Right. So. What's going to really, really matter if the Jaguars win? And somehow, if they start to win, here's what's going to happen. Those players in the minds of people will be elevated because they contributed to winning. I am just one of those people, and I know it's petty. I don't think that people 
should be considered great once they win something or once they accomplish a goal. I think it takes a great person to accomplish the goal. So that means that it had to be great before they did it. It was something in them. Now, we're going to use this word again. It didn't manifest itself until they actually did it. And then all that means in that vernacular, in that context is, uh, well, we ain't prove it to you until you actually saw us winning. But they were great when they woke up. It, I think, I, I, do, I do believe sometimes too, they get greater. If you can somehow imagine that they get greater by actually accomplishing something and doing it. And I don't want to get those two things confused. You can be great at something and that allows you to achieve greatness. And then you can be greater because once you achieved it, you absolutely know that you have the blueprint on how to get back and the mental toughness that it takes to get over those last couple of humps. We see it in boxing all the time. Guys are really, really good. And then they go fight Floyd Mayweather. And then they have 18,000 people at the MGM Garden Arena in Vegas and Lil Wayne's walking Floyd out and all these celebrities that never been to your fight before are sitting on. I used I laugh when I saw guys get real nervous. They talk all of that. Smoke, they got all that smoke. And then when it's time for them to go in there and fight, you look at that look on their face when Floyd's walking to the ring and Lil Wayne's rapping a milli and Judge Mathis and Denzel Washington and Pete Diddy is sitting on the side and God knows how many beautiful women are sitting there and they're looking at you and you got that little dumb look on your face. Like they really didn't come to see me. They came to see him. And then he comes in there and he starts pump faking you. And you thought he was the Showtime Lakers or you thought he was the UNLV running rebels. When really what you get was the San Antonio Spurs, the Alabama Crimson Tide, and you get the, uh, the new England Patriots where he's just totally fundamentally sound. And now, you you look really befuddled and, and silly. So that's what happens sometimes when those key moments kick in. This is why I think the Jaguars are going to be good this year. And this is why I want to tie this in. I actually think what they went through last year with the Chargers, I think that that put a little something that put that bay leaf in their in their in their chili bowl, in their chili pot, and it seasoned it up. And now they won't be able to forget that they can come back from behind. They can do whatever, whenever they get ready. So that's what I think they did last year. And I think that's going to help them this year. But another thing that's going to help them this year is Doug is going to make them, Doug Peterson, their head coach, is going to make them feel like they ain't arrived. They haven't accomplished anything. That they that last year doesn't matter. And that's one thing I will give Doug Marone credit for, the former coach. He says, we what happened last year doesn't help us win any games now it might help you prepare to win those games but you still have to go actually go out and do it our favorite term here two-word term is demonstrated performance right demonstrated performance is is what's going to make you uh better is what's going to is what's going to help you achieve your goals you actually have to go out and do it and that's the thing about these lists they don't really matter in terms of what it is you have to accomplish on the field. Now, sometimes the lists are representative of when you have special people. I'll use the Chiefs as an example. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, three best players on that team. Excuse me, I almost bit my tongue. Three best players on that team. And you somehow, some way feel like they're going to do something above the X's and O's and beyond all of that stuff that is going to allow them to be successful and win the game. Do the Jaguars have those types of players? I think they do. I'm not saying, and, and, and I want you to freeze and ease up and back, back up because I know somebody's saying, did he just say that we have players as good as those three first ballot Hall of Famers? I did not say that. But what I did say was we have a group of young players that absolutely have a chance to grow into that I actually think they have more players. They may not; Those three may not be as good as the Chiefs. The three best Jaguar players might not be as good as the Chiefs players. And the three best Jaguar players, if I have to go out on a limb right now, I'd say it's Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, and Calvin Ridley. And those are three guys that all play skill positions, right? Those are the three best players on the team. And you might be able to flip-flop Ridley. I think he's going to be in shape, and he's going to be the Ridley that we all know. But you can flip-flop those two, and, and those are the three best players. Now, I'm going to name some guys that I believe are going to take that next step to get into that group with them, maybe not with Trevor, but with those other guys. I'm going to name them. I'm going to tell you who they are, and I'm going to be 
Very, very, very straightforward about it. I'll do all of that for you in just a second. As we get to segment three here on Locked on Jaguar. Segment number three. Where do Jaguars rank on these lists? Somebody had Tyson Campbell as an honorable mention, like he's like number 29 in the corners or something like that. I disagree with it. I'm not worried about that. Trevor Lawrence was number seven, I believe, on uh, draft dudes on Joe Joe Marino and Kyle Krabs. Uh, make sure you check out draft dudes also here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's a great, great show. Um, I believe they had Dak, Dak Prescott at six. I, I'm going to put him ahead of Dak Prescott. I, I respect them, and I, I, they were two of my favorites. I, I just think that you, you, there's a tendency to, to reward Dak because he, he probably gets a little bit of a bad rap because of the, the entire team not doing everything that they're supposed to do. I think Dak's a solid player. I think he's very good. I also, I'm also not naive enough to just frame this as, well, whoever, if you ask, 32 GMs who they'd rather have Dak or that's not Dak or Trevor. That's not really indicative of what those guys were trying to say, because I think they'd all take, well, everybody except Dallas, they'd all take Trevor Lawrence. One, because he's younger and two, because there's so much blue sky in front of him with upside. I'm not even talking about that stuff. I think in my opinion, it, 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 even if it's just for one season, I take Trevor Lawrence over Dak Prescott because I've seen Dak fail. I haven't seen Trevor fail when he was expected not to. That's a very critical thing with me when it comes to that. So you got Tyson Campbell, who I think is going to be able to make a lot of noise. I don't think he's ever going to be an interception machine, but I do think he'll go down as one of those guys, almost sort of like Byron Jones, who just retired. But Byron Jones got like a $90 million contract to leave Dallas to go to Miami. And Byron Jones didn't have any interception. If he did, it was just he barely had. But – what he did was he didn't give up a lot of catches. And that's where Tyson Campbell is. He doesn't give up a whole bunch. And, and he's physical. And guys don't run away from him. And when they catch the ball, if he makes contact, the play stops there. He's a really, really good tackler. So I do believe he has a lot of room. I have told anybody who would listen before that Andre Cisco reminds me a lot of Earl Thomas. And I believe that with more winning, he's going to be recognized because one thing he does is pop on tape. He flies. He, he comes in like a whirling dervish. He makes a play when you don't expect it. He has a lot of those hits that end up with the, with the crowd going, woo, because that means they didn't expect it. And it's like, that's who he is. He's sudden. He's a real, he's put together. If you see him in person, good six feet and a half, six one about 210, 215, muscular, but he's quick and he's agile. I think he has the makings of if the Jaguars were consistently in the playoffs, sort of the way Jesse Bates was looked at when the Bengals kept making that run, right? That's what I think he is. I think he's sudden, and I actually think he can be better than Jesse Bates. So, um, I just, yeah, I just said that that man is better than Jesse Bates and that he reminds me of Earl Thomas, who – might be a first ballot hall of fame and people look past some of his behavior but that being said those are the two guys in the secondary i think have a chance to really really get raised up if the jaguars win i think foy olivacon gets a lot more love because he's a tackling machine we talked about him yesterday i think devon hamilton i think the jaguars re-signing him at three years at about 33 million dollars i think that's going to be looked at as a bargain and i wish they did that more with with more players and i hope they start doing it now because they're going to have a lot of guys coming up that have to be re-signed, right? Here's the guy that I think is going to make the biggest leap this year. That is Trayvon Walker. Hello, Mama Walker. I know you're listening because you always listen. Um, I'm going to tell you why. It's because I have seen this kid working out. Y'all going to laugh when I say this, right? Because I know how people think. I think if you put him and – and Miles Garrett out here on the field. And I love Mr. Miles Garrett. In fact, the late great Steve White and I had a little bit of a Twitter battle. And, and I usually don't do this with guys that played the game, especially that played that position. But I was a huge fan of Miles coming out. And I don't think Steve was. Like I said, Steve passed on and, and moved on. And, and we wish his family, we, and we hope he's in a really, really good uh, space spiritually. Um, I miss him. He was a really, really good guy. Uh, but Steve wasn't as high 
on Miles Garrett as me. That's why I don't mind arguing with a dude that played before because uh, in this one, in this case, I was right. Miles Garrett is the truth. Miles Garrett is one of the three best defensive ends in football. If you put him out here on the field, there's a little field right here across from my office where uh, it's just a bunch of grass over there, right? You probably wouldn't athletically be able to tell the difference. The one thing I'll give Miles Garrett the advantage of is he's been rushing a passer forever. Trayvon was not asked to do that very often. Trayvon is more of a barnyard bully type defensive end. This year, though, I, I think by week by week 10, he'll have seven and a half sacks. And we'll see how the rest of the year goes, if he can get over 10. But uh, he is looking so good in his workouts. A lot of this, too, is about how the Jaguars use him and, and how they're going to use him. I do think that by the end of this year, especially, and this really ramps up now, and, and we'll go back to what I said earlier, this really ramps up if – you can combine the things that I'm saying about these individuals. If you could combine that with winning Jaguars win 12, 13 games, they're in the consciousness of the league. It's must see TV. The, the league is always clamoring and fans are always looking. They get fans get tired of seeing the same old people. So when you see these new people and then these new stars and the way, and if it looks really, really pretty, which I expect it to look, the Jaguars are going to have more people ranked high. A lot of this stuff, Depends on it. But I think Trayvon Walker, I think Tyson Campbell, and I think Andre Sisco are the three guys on defense that are going to get their comeuppance. I, I don't think uh, Christian uh, Kirk takes a step back, even though they have Calvin Ridley. I think Ridley's going to be Ridley and get 1,300 yards. But I think Christian Kirk is going to still pop that 1,000 yards. I think the Jags are going to have at least two. Well, they're going to have two, not at least two. It's going to be two. Two wide receivers that both have 1,000 yards. And one of them, I, I think Calvin really is going to the Pro Bowl. That means I think Trevor Lawrence is probably going to throw for over 46, 4,700 yards this year. At the end of this season, Trevor Lawrence will be considered a top five quarterback. Calvin Ridley is going to be a top 10 wide receiver. Trayvon Walker will be a top seven or top eight defensive end. Cam Jordan said something the other day that, that really, really resonated with me. And if y'all don't know Cam Jordan for the Saints, Cam Jordan is likely a Hall of Famer, right? Because people know how good he is. When he was sort of left off of or placed a little lower than I think he thought he would be on that list of edge rushers, he says, what is an edge? Are you talking about a guy that just gets sacks or are you talking about a defensive end that stops the run too? That is a very, very good point. It's a valid point. And that's where I think Trayvon Walker falls in. I think Trayvon Walker can be a Cam Jordan type player who affects the game and is disruptive. Maybe he never gets 15 to 18 sacks. Maybe Steve, maybe the Hutchinson kid, Aiden Hutchinson does get those numbers, but you can get those numbers and not be thought of as uh, as good a player as someone else who doesn't get them. I'm going to give you a perfect example. You know, who's one of the 10, um, one of the top 10 wide I mean, edge rushers, you know it is, it's Yannick Ngakwe, if you're just talking about sacks. Since he came into the league, he's like in the top 10 in both forced fumbles and sacks. But people don't consider him one of the top edge rushers in the league. It's because they think he's deficient playing the run, right? So it's not just about numbers. Sometimes it's about team success, combined with the eyeball test and the numbers. We put all of that stuff in together. People say uh, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. And I always say that's incomplete because numbers may not always lie, but I don't think they always tell the truth. They don't tell the whole story either. So in a nutshell, why player rankings matter? I told you, the better the players, the usually is indicative that the team is, is pretty good or they're always going to have a chance. Why rankings shouldn't matter as much. I told you that too, because football is a game where you need 53 guys, not just the best starting five plus two coming off the bench and where Jaguars will rank on the list towards the end of the year. I know you rank number one with me and I rank number one with you because you're here every day. So shout out to my everydayers. Make sure you tap in to Locked On NFL as well. We also mentioned Locked On Fantasy Football and Locked On NFL Draft. A lot of good coverage from around um, the world of the Locked On Podcast Nation to make sure you don't get left out and you check in also. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. You guys 
Take care of each other until the next episode.